I might hurt the wub. That would help if my microphone was where it should be. Or I don't know why I move it. I guess because it's annoying when it's right here for no reason. Um, well, welcome back to uh, a fra Black Friday. <laughs> there must be haunting Heather's stream. Um, if I can speak, it's been a long day. It's gonna be even longer. Um, so this is this is fancy. This I think is the earliest I've ever streamed Heather Gillespie. So I seen people in the comments being like, "Steve, you got to stream earlier." So here I am. <laughs> it's it's early, earlier at least. Um, so yeah, after this stream at like 9 p.m., we might go a little bit past nine, depending on like whenever I get the stream link. I'm gonna hop over to another stream. It should auto redirect. If not, um, I made a community tab post. I was gonna put the link in the description. I forgot until just now. So I might do that somewhere throughout the stream um, when I have a little bit of downtime. Diane Rock, how you doing? Addie Clark, good to see ya. Mud Pit, how you doing as well? Hope you guys are all having a great um, Black Friday and Thanksgiving. Mud Pit, I know you're in Australia. Do you guys have the same? Uh, Thanksgiving is America. Nicole, good to see you too. Um, I seen, who else did I see up here? I seen Angela. Angela came in clutch with the email. Thank you very much, by the way. I'm looking more into that because that's, that's something. Um, and who else? I don't know. I don't know. If I miss anyone, I'm sorry. Kara, how you doing? Uh, yeah, basically to, to make sure that we're within the fuck that's my house dying. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. I gotta get the fuck out of here. That's why it won't matter when I do the appeal. Um, all right, let's just gonna get this fucking shit up so we can go straight into it. So to this time we're gonna do uh, this stream and then we're gonna do the stories and then the two other streams and then I have um, everything from the rest of the day today that I actually I get pulled up in a second as well. Um, so yeah, we'll just jump into it here. I haven't watched too much of this. I watched, I think, whatever Owl watched of it, but I don't really remember it. It's like 19 minutes. Uh, this is apparently where she doxes all the baby daddies. So we'll I'll see. We'll see how it is. Hi, guys. We are here. Oh, and I gotta... Me and my baby, Xavier. We are having our uh, breakfast, lunch, actually. I got a really nice walk-in. We went all the way from Diversity all the way to Irving. Um, I was looking for a coat because my Columbia is too small. And as you guys can see, my baby is growing. So today is 27 weeks, one day. I mean, she finally does look pregnant. <laughs> Just, I was like, I don't know how it keeps going up and down and up and down. She's definitely pregnant now. Unless this is like a pregnant suit. Yesterday was the first day of my third trimester. That's it, guys. Two days down, one left to go. Uh, I am very, very interested to see what the fuck is going to go on. Um, as you guys know, I've been updating you. Some interesting energy for a pregnant lady. What the fuck is going to go on? You threw out all of this drama, unlawfulness, um, obstruction of justice, corruption, just you name it. Um, anyone who really truly knows me knows that in my mind, I cannot make sense of, of these types of predatory crimes. Um, for instance, I can look the other way on you know witnessing or or experiencing someone selling drugs right because selling drugs to someone who's looking for them is not the same as forcing someone to do drugs who's not looking for them i guess this is going to come all the way in full circle this is literally the last thing i heard her say from today as i was recording the rest of her stories <laughs> i guess it's going to be one of these weeks all right right I thought it was going to be more about Xavier and his antenna and the buttons and how he's used for psyops. So I, that was new. You, you can understand. Um, it's the same thing with everything. If you're considering whether or not a person is a good person, it's completely logical and rational to consider what life um, stresses. That's great, babe. No more. That's more than enough. Thank you so much. 
what life stresses and uh, circumstances and adversities they are being forced to overcome. If someone is going to be forced to, um, you know, sell drugs or watch their family suffer, they're going to sell drugs. And you're going to take that into consideration when you're handling that person. So not all criminals are created equally. Um, but you could probably do something better than selling drugs. I guess it depends what kind of drugs you're selling to. I'm not necessarily um, disagreeing <laughs> here. Um, but I just, I don't even know where does it come from? Do you owe people money, Heather? Do you like, are you trying to, trying to say that they're harassing you now when I, they're probably just trying to get their money? And that's the same with non-criminals. Or maybe Xavier. You know, people do really fucked up stuff um, under the guise of they are law enforcement or an authority, so they can. Just because you can does not mean that you should, right? So um, I've been waiting on a waiting list in 2020. Um, I was unlawfully literally ejected from my house. If you guys can think of like those cartoons in in the 90s, like the Roadrunners and like the Elmer Fudd type of cartoons when like the character would like press a button in a car or a plane and it would like shoot them out like with no reasoning or like good landing space. I think that's just like Heather's mind most of the time. It's just like, that's what's going on up there. It's just like fucking Looney Tune cartoons. That's what they did to me from my own home. Um, with my three children, Viviana, Alexis, and Lewis. Um, and they did that. I lived in Rascal Village. I don't know how she can sit like that. I can't sit like that. I shared an apartment with Dylan. Um, we were in a serious, committed, long-term, five-year relationship at that time. Um, and he was abusing drugs and alcohol. And I still hadn't completely checked out. Uh, he was beating me up and doing a lot of really fucked up stuff. But I still felt like... It was a safe environment for your kids to be around. And that's why you like sent him off to live other places while Dylan was there. Cause he thought I could make it work or something. He wasn't like a monster, you know, and like he had positive intention. Um, but the recurring theme, as I go back to the point in my life where things changed from me being an office administrator at Northwestern hospital to me being used and abused and exploited and, you know, human sex trafficked and regular human trafficked. Um, what regular human trafficked? So I, am I silly? Cause I don't think Heather was ever regularly human trafficked. Isn't that like when you bring people over the border and shit, has she ever left the States? What is she? Oh, well, Jamaica. Yeah. But what, what? And all of the things that I learned in going through those those circumstances, in a lot of times, law enforcement and federal agents are involved and they are taking incredible payoffs uh, to look the other way, so to speak. So they will justify, um, you know, allowing these things to take place. And it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Um, you guys know that I'm on page 424 of my novel where I'm writing all the details other than people's names. Is that all the crap that's written on mercifulstorm.com? Because I tried to read that one time and it was just gobbledygook and I got chat GPT to read it and it pretty just much told me I was like, this is gobbledygook. <laughs> is that the novel? 400 pages. I haven't seen no 400 pages. Maybe I'm not looking in the right places. Um, because I think it does need to be exposed. As I said before, I talk a lot about the One Love campaign. But she repeats herself a lot, too, for there to be 400 pages to this novel. Before you interact with anyone, you need to ask yourself, would I be okay with this happening to me, right? Um, if you're walking by my mm. space and you're an investigator or an agent who's assigned to this case... Yeah, we'll live snipe her if, uh, if she does go live because I heard she's been threatening to. I don't know. What, how is that a threat? I'm going to go live, guys. You don't want me to go live. Crazy things happen when I go live. Like, just, what, what do you mean? What are you doing in the past four years that I have been updating everyone daily on what's what action has been taken, uh, who I've spoken with, what calls I've made? 
where I've stayed, every stop along the way, how much money I've invested personally and lost oh, yeah, into yeah. keeping myself alive. Um, it's unacceptable. You know, we live in a, in a democracy, supposedly, but I can't see it. Um, the one love campaign is when you ask yourself, as I said, would this be okay if it was going on with me? And that's more than just thinking outside yourself. That's no, that's literally thinking inside yourself. Would I be okay if this was happening to me? That's making it a very personalized experience. I hope that this does not explode when I open it. And if it does, I'm going to have to run away. Hopefully it just doesn't. It's also thinking outside yourself. If you were a mother, if you were ah, okay, a yeah. daughter. So it, it takes some complex compassion and thinking and consideration, um, you know, to, to deal with these situations. Um, my number one issue remains that number one, I'm 27 weeks pregnant. I'm still laying on the floor. I have made it clear that I want nothing to do with this, that I'm not willing to work as an undercover. Um, if it means that I'm sleeping outside on the floor of a parking lot, you know, it's not safe. I'm in my third trimester. I wish just all homeless people could say, you know what? I'm, I don't agree to being homeless. Okay. So just give me a house. And you better smarten up. Like, what What do you think this is? After a pregnancy, it's unacceptable. Like, it's sad, sure. But this is your this is your show. This isn't fucking the world's show to fix. Like, what? I put myself on the waiting list with 311, which is the city's main shelter service. I called them twice a week, every week, religiously. Yesterday or the day before, at 4 a.m., they claimed to have made a call to me for placement. I was asleep like any, like most other 27 week pregnant women. It's my third trimester. That means I'm almost seven months pregnant. I'm exhausted. Um, and I'm dealing with all of this stress. I have three children. My youngest child, Alexis, is being prevented direct communication with me. I call her every day, multiple times. I text. Why does she have the headphones in? I mean, I know this is like, I'm just wondering. Is she listening to herself to make sure the audio levels are good? Something I should maybe do with my life. I can't listen to myself if I'm talking though, because that didn't give you schizophrenia. Text her every day, all day long. I call her father. I am worried. I have been worried. May 26th of this year was the last time I was able to speak with her. My daughter Viviana. Her and I talk five, six times a day on FaceTime. All of a sudden, five weeks ago, approximately. You got to get it together, BCG. <laughs> What's happening over there? Ultimately, she starts not answering the phone anymore, behaving completely out of character. I'm asking her brother, where are you? Where is your sister? My kids are now alone a lot of the time. Why? Why is that? And it's strategic and it comes, it comes in cycles. Hi, baby. He's, he's moving around. Um, but like I've told you before, it's my one and only job to be a mother to my children. You failed it. You failed that job. That's not very cool. These are my children. My body created them. I birthed them through the vaginal canal and I raised them their entire lives through 2020, mostly by myself. Their father and their father's families have always been my biggest support. Um, but even that was limited to the weekends. If I ever had an emergency with my children and needed someone to pick them up, do you know who I called? You're the baby daddies? I bet you're not Dylan. They're grandma and grandpa. Okay, so why is Dylan still in this picture? On their dad's side. That's who I called. Calling either one of their fathers was a hit or miss. Orlando would be like, where are you going? No, I'm not going to watch her. You can watch her. And I'd be like, I have work. And he'd be like, yeah, right. And I'd have to go. Yeah, right. You're probably just going to prison to visit Dylan. Go behind his back as a grown ass man and call his mom, Lucia. And she'd always say yes. Even if she was busy, she'd always carve out time in her schedule to come pick up my daughter. For so not your, not your, I thought she meant her parents. So like you went to your ex's parents and it was like, your, uh, your son won't let me just gallivant off in the world and leave the kids with him. So can, can I leave him with you? And they were probably like, well, I don't want Heather bringing the kids to a drug deal or some other shady thing. So sure. 
for me to go to work or the gym or something reasonable. It was never for me to go to party. It was never for me to do anything other than make money. Which was by partying and dealing, right? That was because she was at the club at that point. I don't know. I mean, I'm making assumptions. Or, you know, focus on my health. Um, so to them, I want to say again, thank you so much. Um, from the bottom of my heart and the top of my heart and all places in my heart, everything that you have had to do, uh, not have had to, because you don't have to, everything that you've done for me and my children, I'm super grateful for uh, Consuelo, Lewis, Franklin, Lucia. I'm very grateful whether we get along or not all the time. Children, and I say this all the time, require as much love as possible. I know that their fathers love them. Lewis and Orlando definitely love them, but they're they're guys, you know? They're the types of fathers that are like, yeah, we could have McDonald's every single day and never shower. That sounds great. Like, they're guys, you know? Does it sound great? That doesn't sound great. Oh, and their moms and dad, their, their parents have helped me create a, a family dynamic with my children and uh, an expectation from my children that has been consistent throughout my life. I was a 19 year old mother. That means I'm always growing. I'm always getting different jobs. I'm always moving. So no matter where I moved, as long as I stayed within a reasonable distance of the kids parent of the kids grandparents, they would come pick them up. I chose to put my big kids in school in the district where they lived because I didn't want them to have to go through what I went through as a teenager, a million different schools, a million different social groups. I wanted them to have roots, you know? So Imagine if Xavier had a friend or just friends in general, and they call him up and like, what are you up to? Is like, I'm just listening to Heather talk about how she raised her kids that aren't fucking here while we live in the tent for going on what? Is it two years? Almost two years now, 16 months? Like, I don't know, man. This is just like, they're not self-aware at all. So, and I'd like to do that for this baby, you know, which is why we stay using Xavier's father's address, even though we only lived there last summer and we have not been back. We've been in a tent since February 15th, 2022. Um, and I want to press criminal and civil charges against everyone involved. I don't know how many more times I could say it or how much more articulate I can be. This is abusive. I wake up every night in the middle of the night in incredible, tremendous pain from my spinal cord, from my hips. Um, I cry for a little bit in the morning when I get my bearings and realize I'm not home, I'm not inside. It's been a uh, fucking forever. I don't think she's still waking up thinking she's at home. If you, Really? Maybe once in a while, but uh, every day? Every day? I forgot I'm living on the streets. Uh, and that's never going to change. Uh, I have not been in a situation where I felt home since 2037 West Roscoe. Even Montclair didn't feel home because my kids were not there. And my entire life, as I said, since 19, I'm 36 now, that's nearly 20 years of my life, I've been raising my children. Home was not home unless it was for me and my three kids. They lived with me at least a minimum of four days a week. Usually it was closer to five. But you still needed to like take some time for Dylan. So um, 311 calls. They say that they closed my case. I, I posted the text message. 5.39 a.m. I get um, a text message from their system automated saying your case has been closed. I just burst into tears. I've been on the waiting list for a year, more than a year. I've been calling them two times a week every single week since August or September in anticipation of the cold weather. I'm borderline anemic, which means that my levels are always kind of normal, kind of not, but I get freezing cold at 40 or 45 degrees, meaning the, the tips of my fingers are numb, my toes are numb, I'm crying out in pain. Um, I don't know what to make of this, and I don't know why law enforcement has not direct, directly contacted me back with solutions. Um, I keep on getting promised that Xavier's dad is getting us a, le a loft space in Berwyn and people have promised that they're replacing my vehicle and then, you know. This is all you though. This is all your problems. <laughs> like if Xavier isn't keeping up with his promises or his dad or whatever, you got to go figure it out. The cops aren't there to figure out how to make you not homeless because then every fucking homeless person in Chicago would be going to the police and being like, 
Can you help me not be homeless? I wish it was that easy. It's not. Like, I don't know. Why does she think everything's just going to be done for her? And this is like accomplishing anything. I, I heard her the other day. She's like, I got up at like seven in the morning. I told Xavier, we got to get going. And he just, it took forever. It's like, you can just wake up and expect things to get done for you. Like, I don't. Has she done anything? Has she actually done anything? You know, different people have promised employment and all this stuff. I am capable. I am dynamic. There is nothing I can't do. I can earn my own money. I just need you to get out of my way and let me do so. Okay. Um, is anyone in her way? She's in her own way. I'm working on the coffee table book. As you guys know, my novel, as you guys know, is already in the 420 something pages. Book. Um, and in addition to that, I'm just trying to be okay emotionally. You're separating me from the people I love. That's not a mental health issue. That means you've ripped me out of my life, the life I've worked my entire life to have, and I want my life back. That's sadness. That's causal to what you've done to me. You know, that's not mental health issue. Um, I don't have any substance abuse issues. I don't really do anything other than sit around this tent crying applying for jobs on average 40 to 100 a month um 40 oh thank that's you meant i apply to 4200 jobs a month no nah, okay about 4200 dollars a month all right that's a is that a lot of money that's like it's, a, eh, it's up there i'm about to start crocheting a blanket for my baby we just went to michael's and got crochet hook. I got a crochet hook and this really fuzzy yarn. I do know how to crochet. So I'm going to work on a couple more pages of the like 50,000 a year. It's like it's not rich, but it's like it's out of uh lower class. Actually with inflation, I don't even fucking know what lower class is anymore. Everything's insane nowadays, guys. Doritos is like $9 a bag. Never eaten Doritos again except that one time coffee table book and make this blanket but i'm i'm frustrated you know i'm gonna go into labor soon and the same people who have not harassed me since 2020 are in the comments with the same rhetoric as they had in 2020. um for the most part i thought we were past that so i'd like you guys anyone who's in who's assigned to this investigation to please pay attention pay attention to who comes back around when this abusive behavior picks back up um and pay close attention because there are no accidents and there are no coincidences. Um, I'm gonna eat dinner now. We got chicken shack again. So chicken shack again. I don't know what that is. That actually looks pretty good. It's like what Chinese rice and chicken and uh, pita and some other. It's a rice on rice. Oh, so delicious! So yummy. That's Baby's so hungry. I I had a yogurt and a, one of those tiny salads from Target the three dollar ones for for breakfast brunch um and now i'm about to eat dinner i that's about it you know i want to go indoors i want to raise my children um i want my car back it's the exact same thing i say on every single live i'm getting sick and tired of saying well i'm not getting there i'm i'm sick and tired of saying the same thing uh i've had I should just start the head. I should do it the Heather way, guys. I should just get on stream and start complaining about things until I get done for me. I want the strike removed. I am not going to stop talking about it until it's removed. We're, that's all we're going to talk about every fucking day until it's gone. And then what else do I want? I want, I want a better house too, you know? Yeah, I want my skylight back. I want... I want a really nice car. I want a fucking Lamborghini. All right. And I won't shut the fuck up about it until it happens. I don't have to do anything about it. I'm not going to take any steps to actually accomplish these things. I just want them handed to me. And if it doesn't happen, there's going to be hell to pay. Had enough, you know, and I've been saying that for. I have had enough. Since it began. This is not my life. This is not the life I deserve. I deserve to be, you know, having access to basic human necessities like a toilet like a shower um so that's the update for today it's i'm 27 weeks pregnant this is heather gillespie um it's november 17th or 18th 18th saturday i don't know my phone is. i've texted my <laughs> well it was just like 
I don't know where my phone is. Family asking, what are we doing for Thanksgiving? I haven't heard from my mother in over a year. Haven't heard from my sister in over a year. That's concerning. Um, and my kids and my father are, you know, I'm always in contact with them, but it definitely feels like there's something going on again, which I haven't felt since 2021, uh, which was the first time they did all of this nefarious bullshit. I mean, if people don't want you in their life, why do you want to be in their life? Like, why do you keep chasing Dylan around or seeing what he's up to and annoying your family members who don't want any part? Like, it's sad. It is sad that they don't want to have any part to do with you. But you're also kind of fucking crazy. So I can understand because I'm sure they have tried to help you a bunch of times because family members don't usually just give up on each other. Even the Titties family tried. They tried, right? But some people are just too crazy. A lot of people were charged. Um, and I'm sure that they're going to be again. So sponsors, if you guys are out there, we have not seen you. Xavier said that he went to go meet for food and that no one was there. So um, I had to use the money that was given to me for maternity clothes. That's what I've been using to feed us lately. That's they did the exact same thing last month. I had gotten us a brand new tent. Someone kicked the whole front door off and kicked me in my eye. Why does she keep saying there's a front door in the tent? There's no door. It's, um, what do you call that a door? I mean, it's like it's a zipper. It's a tent. It's like, what would I call it? Maybe I would call it a door. I don't know. Should I go live in a tent for like, I guess not right now. It's winter outside. But next time it's not winter. Maybe I should try it and just see what I call. <laughs> um, and I received money for maternity clothing and had to use it to replace the tent. So I, I'm just sick of it. I, you it's a flap or an entrance. Yeah, I call it an entrance. I like Diane Rocks. You guys can see I my tummy is busting out of these pants. And this is one pair of three pants I have left that fit. I don't have access to a washer dryer regularly. I am outside in a tent. Like, yeah, whatever you call the opening to a cave, the entrance. <laughs> can you give me a fucking break, please? Um... That's about it. I had a nutrition client yesterday who was so inappropriate. I mean, it was just awful. At first, they were... Who the fuck is getting nutrition advice from Heather Gillespie living in a tent that's eating fast food or nothing every day? Completely appropriate, you know, and had boundaries and asked me for the nutrition plan. But they had leukemia and prediabetes. And I can work with prediabetes, but I've never worked with a leukemia patient before. Not that I wouldn't. I said, absolutely, I'll take it on. But I need you to understand that I've never worked with someone with leukemia. So I'm going to have to literally go to the library, spend a day preparing. I need you to complete a health assessment, write down all the details. I'll take it to the library and look for any considerations. And then we can have a Zoom, a free Zoom consult. And I'll tell you how much it's going to cost for me to give you this whole plan. They were all, yo, that sounds great. I sent them the assessment and then they're starting to text me ridiculous. Like, do you have time for a phone call? Do you want to talk? I'd like to get to know each other. That like what where's the problem? I still don't know where the problem is. My hair is driving me nuts. <laughs> I went outside and then the wind was like and now and now this is where we are. Bro, I'm not looking for friends. I am not looking for friends. I have three children. What if they just wanted to talk about like the nutrition? Because you're their nutrition specialist or something. One on the way. I'm sleeping in a tent. I don't need any friends right now. I need support. I need the authority to intervene. That is what I need. Um, I, like I said, I, I completed three or four pages so far for the coffee table book. So I'm, I'm focusing on that. I'm going to type up um, basically my narrative from what's happened from page 424 of my novel through today um, and handwrite it like I always do so that I have record um, and so that, you know, we know who's full of shit and who's keeping it real. I always tell the truth. And the reason for that is because a lie cannot stand next to the truth and survive. It will be exposed. Um, but yeah, that's about it. You guys have a great day. I don't know what I'm doing. The shelter system, you know, threw away my request. Um, at this point, it's going to be up to, you know, completely private sponsors or if law enforcement is able to find out who is preventing my resumes from being distributed um, and who is, you know, trying to harm me still. Leaving me in a tent is not a solution. So it. 
Maybe it's you, Heather. Maybe it's like Fight Club. You're Tyler Durden. This is all you. It's a, a Band-Aid on a fracture, in the words of Eric Scholl. You guys have a great day. Um, I miss my children. Alexis, if you're listening, mommy loves you so much, and I call you every single day. I leave a message on the cell phone for you every single day. Viv, I've only spoken to you six times in the last 26 days, and you know that's unacceptable. Bebe, I just got off the phone with you, so we're all good. But girls, your mother misses you. Please call me. Um, and if anyone else is listening, their fathers... You're driving me crazy not letting me know if my children are okay. I'm a full-time mother, not a bum. Please call me and let me know that my children are good. And for the people in the comments who... I mean, if we looked at the definition of a bum, I'm pretty sure Heather would fall under that category. I don't think we need to do that. I think we all know what a bum is. You know, have something clearly wrong with them, an undiagnosed issue of sorts. Um, please go away. You know, this is my safe place, not yours. So... Bye, you guys. Xavier's got smoke his weed. Okay, so now um, this is the stories from this week. Uh, well, this is basically what happened after this the stream we just watched. And then there's going to be the two streams she did either yesterday or the day before. I can't remember. I'm going to wrap it up with uh, the last little bit of the stories. We got, I think we got lots of time. We got like what? an hour and 45 minutes to get through this all i think we can do that this is 20 minutes the other is like 50 like together what's 50 plus 20 70 i think um yeah yeah i think we can get through all this i'm getting a lot of questions that i i don't mind answering but at the same time it's like how is this relevant to understanding anything if you're wondering what's going on sorry for my face mask um, understand that every single problem that we're currently facing, the resolution begins with housing, period. Um, I'm fully capable of working, uh, you know, and doing a number of different self-employed gigs or gigs for someone else. Uh, I've literally done everything. I have five to seven years experience just at Northwestern's campus. That means private physician's offices as well as Northwestern. I've also worked at Alexian Brothers, Gottlieb, et cetera, and so forth. The basic bottom line is, Regardless of everything that's happened, I could not tell you in an hour long, you know, session, I would need like weeks to tell you everything. I have been targeted. I've done everything in my power to find a way out of, you know, this tent. I need someone to intervene. Law enforcement nor the city of Chicago have done so. I mean, just stop going back into the tent. If you think you're being kept there. I don't know. No one's keeping you inside the tent. I don't know. This is a sneak peek into the coffee book, I think. The coffee table book. Oh my. I don't know what that was. God, it feels so good to get out of the fucking tent. You guys have no idea. Well, maybe you do. We're out here. It's getting serious. No, babe. Yeah, because it wasn't serious before. Um, We went to Whole Foods. Now, and we went to Target and Marshalls and TJ Maxx to try to find a coat. We just put a lock on the tent and supposedly a space heater would be way more safe, probably take up about the same amount of electricity is probably more energy efficient. And it's designed to stay on for long periods. Unlike a hair dryer that's supposed to just dry your hair <laughs> within like 30 minutes tops. Um, I, I don't think they think things through. Maybe it's just easy. It's more portable the hair dryer. <laughs> But though, like I have one of them back there, like one of those things. That's uh, you could put that in the cart. Like that's like fucking it's light as shit. The yacht club security came to us yesterday, and we told him that we were locking the tent. Um, so that hasn't really been an issue when we go get food or anything. I got some yarn to start. Um crocheting a blanket for my baby. These places look cool behind her. And I need clothes, you guys. I have no clothes. And um, she has all the outfits, though. Well, uh, what about the photo shoot outfits? And like um, the cosplay me outfit with her beanie and their 
fake glasses. It is so dark in this So, we're 27 weeks pregnant and I'm making a blanket for my baby. It's a shame. I do this for all of my children. All three of my children have, or had, a blanket. I had it in my little um, memory box. Was she actually knitting? That just looked like a bathrobe. And I don't know. Am I am I going crazy? Um, I hope everything wasn't destroyed. It was at my exclusive house in the basement. But oh, the past four years have been all about destroying my life. So who knows if we still have them. Um, how are you guys doing? It's getting dark in the tent. And I think we might go out and stretch our legs right now. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting stir crazy. I'm thirsty for answers. She has head. I don't know if she's listening to music to drown out the hair dryer, but I can't hear you, Heather, when you got this hair dryer on. You can turn it off for like five minutes to do the video. That would be appreciated, but that would just make too much sense. Why has the city given us any options? What the fuck is going on here? I don't know. Look, pumpkins. It's not. It's not October anymore. This was from this week, November. Good morning, you guys. I had, I would say, the most painful evening of my entire pregnancy yesterday so far. Um, very painful. I feel as though someone may be pounding my spinal cord from the lower region, so the tailbone area with a rubber mallet upward, and also pounding from the top where my clavicle and my neck uh, meet my shoulders and my spinal column and pounding that down. And like I need like a chiropractic adjustment severely. Um, I am in so much pain from both sides of my hips and my tailbone. The cement that we're sleeping on is not helping and the pressure in front from the pregnancy she should really put a bra on and like i missed half of what she's saying i don't i need to get the fuck out of this <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with my house it's falling apart i might have to dip in a second not like dip dip but like if i go away for a second it's just because i gotta make sure <laughs> um is also you know making it difficult so Oh, this is why I use marijuana and CBD for my care team. What? My care team? Oh, my care team agrees. It's a much better choice than any other hard pain meds. Um, what do you? What would you do for something like that? I'm not going to go to the hospital. They're going to prescribe pain pills. I, I don't think they would prescribe pain pills to a pregnant lady. <laughs> That's just me. You know. uh, Addie Clark, thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate you. I don't take medication. So I'm very sensitive to medicines. Um, the medication I was taking over the counter and said ibuprofen 200 milligrams alternated with acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, um, every four to six hours for four days for tooth pain resulted in a Mallory Wise tear where I was vomiting blood. Um, and I was treated at Gottlieb Hospital for that. Um, I that's what caused ibuprofen and acetaminophen caused a Mallory. What's a, what is that, by the way? I have no idea what that is. Um, I just I find that hard to believe. That's the most commonly used thing. Like you can take, give that shit to babies. I think not a lot, but like a little bit. I don't want to take anything harder than that. And if I can't even tolerate an over-the-counter pain med, for me, you know, the answer is going to be marijuana or CBD. Um, there are There is a lot of judgment about it. I don't care. Um, you know, I have to do what I have to do. I'm sleeping on concrete, um, you know, waking up five to six times a night on average in incredible pain. Um, and I, I'm not going to take an opiate. I'm not going to take, you know, a, a codeine or what's the other heavy pain med? No, that's, ins no, what? Okay, so then last announcement for the morning. I'm not going to go over everything. If you guys have not been here the whole time, you can go to the little live section. It's the center column of my Insta. Um, and there's a bunch of lives where I usually try to update on the situation um, as it currently stands. But there's a little clip on YouTube I highly recommend. I'm going to post it right here. You can click on it. Um, since I'm separated from my children and I experienced this BLM stuff firsthand, I mean, I was out here during the protests. I was watching people get pulled from their vehicles and businesses get overtaken. Um, 
I think this is a really great clip. PBS made it. They include children in their interview. Um, it's a great dialogue to have with your children to keep it light, but also be honest and open. And it's a it's a really good starting point. Um, I highly recommend it. I also. <laughs> Are you watching this from the tent? So many better things you could be doing, but uh, okay, okay. I so have to equally say that I agree with staying impartial um, and not siding with any one race. And this goes for and every everyone, whether you are a black mother, a brown. And what I mean by that. I hate. <laughs> she can't figure out. Can't she just re like pre-record a video and then cut it so it just it goes into itself? Why is she always just ending mid-sentence and not? finishing her things it drives me nuts that is we we cannot support a culture of elitism like it's already so sporadic and insane but for her to just leave things open-ended like that it's even more <laughs> i need some kind of you need to finish the loops we cannot support a culture of you're white so you're better you're brown so you're better you're black so you're better you're white, so you're beautiful. You're black, so you're beautiful. You're brown, so you're beautiful. You're yellow or tan or peach, so you're beautiful. How about like your skin color doesn't make you anything? Like it's probably be the last thing you pay attention to. It'd probably be like your character. Probably your character. And the color of our skin is like down here on the list of reasons why we should be judging people or not at all um the things we should judge them are how kind are they how intelligent are they what is their dedication and willingness to succeed in life how open-minded can we be i don't know what intelligence has to do with anything you could be a really good person and not be intelligent at all you can be a really evil person and be super intelligent so i don't know what the fuck she's trying to say here i know it's heather but like and that doesn't mean you know taking advantage of others that means trying to understand the perspective of another class race group um parenting dynamic family you know homosexuality queer and trans uh trans all the buzzwords all of these things it's open-mindedness and and the dis she did it again cuts a fucking mid-sentence uh baby blanket progress 27 weeks pregnant and only six calls with my daughter since one month ago and nothing from my other daughter since may 26 no assistance from or communication back from pd police i guess uh despite my hundreds of emails calls and petitions reports filed Just because the comments have been real nasty again lately, um, mercifulstorm.com is a social justice page that I started creating in 2021, briefly after, uh, so about six months after being displaced from my own home. Um, very terrifying time. I wish I could say it was fixed. It's not. I'm still in a tent, as you can see. Um, if you cannot acknowledge at the very least that I have been calling the FBI and law enforcement for help on camera since 2020. I'll but that's not going to do anything. Along with a million other domestic abuse resources and resources for homelessness and getting zero results, you're blatantly lying to yourself. Can anyone speak on the fact that this is unacceptable and how can you make this acceptable in any sort of rhetoric? Shout out for the food. This is like this is the other outfit I'm talking about. <laughs> she has other clothes. Thank you guys so much. Please continue to worry first about feeding the children and my family, and then um, you know, blessing us with these gifts. Uh, I I appreciate it greatly, but it's just so much. Um, so thank you very much. But let's try to be more even in our distribution and, and begin with children. If this is the abundance, then I'm super grateful. Thank you so much. Um, in addition to that, Google Voice is not giving the option to block an unknown number. It does usually give the option. So I'm going to insert. I think you just have to block all unknown numbers, not like specific ones, because like, how would it know? How would it know, right? Um...
I do, again, I think it's just how they're not knowing how to use their shit, just like with the Google Photos. There's a screen recording of the fact that um, it's allowing me to block any other number other than the unknown so that we can go on the record as to four solid years of this uh, lovely treatment. So, yum. The donut? I guess it's a donut. Thank you so much, Stans. Donuts are abandoned on a fracture, but we are grateful nonetheless. What was she? She was just going on about. Oh, she's a nutrition <laughs> advisor or something. Is this how uh, your nutrition advisor eats? The real MVP here. We love donuts. Love them. This is uh, cement has me hurting. Um. And I thought this was a lady sleeping on cement, but this is just a diagram of how to sleep while you're pregnant, I think. I don't know why this one's wrong. Or why these ones are wrong. This one's right. I press play. Did I think I did? Okay, so I found a little, a little toggle on Google Voice. But... Okay, wow. Well, I'm glad you have the fucking subtitles up here because I can't hear it. <laughs> this fish is cute. I should have made that the thumbnail. We got Xavier as the thumbnail today, though. Um, okay, so I found a little toggle on Google Voice that what lets you block the unknown numbers. Is that what she's gonna say? Uh, filter spam, um, unsuspected spam phone calls. Unsuspected spam phone calls. Okay. So we're gonna try that. You guys know this has been ongoing for nearly four years now. I don't know what else I can do. You can look at. You could change your number. MercifulStorm.com, the strongest doll, do you doll, um, 100 G E E H L G forever underscore power P W R marketing with no vowels. I created and built all of these instas and probably a few more that I'm not remembering the handles for that they've literally just been locking um, for no reason. It makes no sense and Instagram doesn't take responsibility. They say it's not them or they don't even answer at all. Um, I don't know. Is she on something here? Like, why is her eyes so big? And why is she, like, putting the phone, like, all these different places, like, up and then down? And, like, it just is a fa it's a weird feeling. It feels like she's on something. Guys, it's four years, like, will someone... I finally figured out how to block the unknown numbers, guys. <laughs> okay, okay. Please do something already. Back to normal, hopefully. So I just went to the restroom so that I could learn that they destroyed these pants as well. There's like a hole this big. It's Who is that? They destroyed the pants? It's only you and Xavier in the tent. Strategically placed there. This is one of three pairs of pants I have left. I can't fucking take it anymore, you guys. Who does shit like that? Like, what the fuck? I don't know. Can we see the hole in the pants? Is this we're just supposed to believe it because you want new clothes? Because you walk around and you're like, look how cute this is. Look how cute that is. If only I had money to get it. Can you send me $100 to take some photos in a forest? It totally went towards the photo shoot, guys, and not drugs for me or Xavier. It definitely went towards the photo shoot. And then... You guys think that shit is a joke that Cat Williams says? Watch that link. That shit is real. They're doing this shit to celebrities. I'm not even a celebrity. They did it to me. It is creepy and scary as fuck. Also, they're driving me crazy, you guys. I'm trapped in this tent. They still have not given me an apartment. They have closed my case from shelter assistance three or four times. I finished the whole entire big thing of yarn. I'm making my baby a blanket. I'm 27 weeks pregnant. My insurance is refusing to allow me regular prenatal care, which is a state-funded plan, Molina Health Insurance. That is it's going to suck when they take her kid, and they're it's going to be like, why are you taking it? It's because all you did was sit in a tent, yelling at fucking live stream, knitting a blanket. And that's all you got. That's all you, you had nine months. Nine months to figure out how to get the fuck out of here. I mean, like, way more than that, technically. But you had nine months from this pregnancy to figure it out. And it's not, I don't think she's going to make it out in time, guys. State of Illinois. Um, I have been seeing a doctor, you know, random doctors, but it's just whatever's going on here. Um, 
it's it's unacceptable it's absolutely unacceptable and just to prove it to you guys while i've been producing and creating all of this i have been homeless this whole entire time producing and creating what the instagram page the coffee table book we're never gonna see the novel that i'm never gonna read <laughs> what is she producing look here's the pick from 2021 look I don't know where the pic from 2021 was, but I don't really care about <laughs> a picture from 2021. Now you guys know if you want to be a sponsor or donate in any way, please do so via Cash App. I'm going to post the link. Uh, they did. I did have to change it recently because they messed up my one Heather GEE one. So it's dollar sign Heather GoPro Solo. Anything is appreciated. Even if it's a dollar, five dollars, it's very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much. 27 weeks pregnant exhausted um and i go to sleep at least at least all throughout this week she's been 27 weeks pregnant <laughs> she hasn't changed it from like anything like she does normally she usually goes back and forth or switches to months something, something, something. with my charger plugged in right there we're sleeping on a rubber backed carpeting that has rubber on it from an abandoned walmart okay it has no leaks at all, and it is rubber on one side. Somehow, only in areas exposed to us, it's wet. The rest of the surface area is completely dry. Makes no sense. No, oh, did you piss the bed maybe? I don't know. I also wake up, I need the light, Xavier, and into the power strip where all of my chargers have been without any issue for the past several weeks, my chargers are missing. Make that make sense. You don't know, you don't remember what you're doing. Or Xavier's fucking with you, which would be really funny because <laughs> maybe he gets sick of you and he's like, you know what? I'll show this bitch today. I'm going to hide all her cell phone chargers. let go crazy and do a fucking live stream and then we'll laugh at her. <laughs> I don't know. If Xavier is nefarious like that, I, I hope we get to talk to Xavier one day. I hope. I hope. Sleep with a lock on the inside of the time. Xavier and I are the only ones here. I'm tired of fucking being played with. Leave my shit alone. There's a grocery store, a block. Like I could just picture Xavier giggling in the corner being like, <laughs> she actually thinks someone's coming into the tent. It's only me in here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, they have every- mid sentence is in Still awake, trying to get everything dry. Keep it that way. Well, at least you have a fucking hair dryer. It's, it's to make things dry. That's good. Exhausted. 27 weeks pregnant. Living the fucking dream here. You see? I was up until 5 a.m. Trying to keep Xavier dry and all of our belongings from getting destroyed. Finally fell asleep around 5.30. I just thought of something. I don't know why I'm putting this much thought into it, but if there's a hairdryer going on inside the tent, there must be a hole, right? For the cord to go out, to go into the outlet, wherever the fuck that is. Why couldn't someone just reach their hand inside the tent and take shit out? Like, it doesn't matter if there's a fucking lock on the tent. There's obviously some way to get in if there's stuff... Like, if there's a line going through to the inside of the tent, you know what I mean? So, maybe someone is stealing their stuff? I don't fucking know. But, like, this isn't a way to live. I'm surprised she's lived this long like this. I wouldn't be able to. This is a, I don't, like, how long are we going to watch her be like this? Forever? Uh, and at 7.30, someone stole our extension cord and our ability to dry and heat ourselves yeah <laughs> okay oh wow okay i'm freezing uh wet and uh that's about it it's probably another homeless person sick of hearing that fucking hair dryer all the time all my shelter requests have been closed to the city of chicago after about 30 times submitting them so i'm done doing that um receiving threats from people impersonating law enforcement government officials etc and so forth 
ready to shut this phone number down completely. Um, I just have to point out that it's crazy to me that everything that they've put me through and all of the reports that I filed regarding each of the violations of the law, human and civil rights, uh, etc. and so forth, they just continue. Um, but like I said, if I were to walk up to someone doing it and stab them in the face. Don't. Why are you saying this? <laughs> How is this going to help your case? My eyes are hazel, super green, more than light brown, but they look black I in this lighting. Exhausted is not the word. What the fuck are you talking about stabbing people for? I would go to prison for a long time. Yeah, no shit you would. Is not four years long enough to figure out who the fuck is doing this and put a stop to it? How am I? Uh, I think she's talking about the screwdriver stabbing. We've already been through that. Same song and dance. <laughs> being protected, but I'm being kept outside in a tent. How is Xavier's brother the district attorney and I'm supposed to trust them, but they've been holding both of us outside in a tent. I'm 27 weeks pregnant and Molina Healthcare, a plan that I was put on by the state of Illinois. Doesn't it even sound weird? Molina. I mean, mo most healthcare sounds kind of weird. Yeah. Like you're a mole, a lady mole, like a woman mole. I didn't think of that at all, but okay. Now I'm going <laughs> to. What's a mole? someone who goes to see what's going on in certain offices or places. I'm not a fucking mole. At the very least, no one has ever paid me to be one. I called DHS. What about Aflac? What are you, <laughs> you going to take offense to Aflac? Like what? It's a name of a fucking health insurance. Is it health insurance? It's a health care plan. I don't know what the fuck this thing is. I asked them for an insurance change and they said, quote, you're locked in. We cannot change you. That's a lie. That's not, a, you're homeless, right? Yeah, I don't think you have very many options. I have not been able to see a regular OB, my OB, my gynecologist, because they don't accept my insurance. So I'm going to random OB gynecologists that accept this Molina healthcare. What about my happiness, my pregnancy, my health? What about all the other homeless people's happiness and health and et cetera and so forth? Okay. Them. God, please find me a boyfriend. No. What? Fuck a boyfriend? Let me get a check, please. Is this her? Oh, this is her from two years ago. Oh, give me a check so I could buy my own. I love him so much. I don't know why I keep waking up at this time. At 1.49 in the morning, she's waking up. My face is swollen. Uh, my belongings are scattered all over my tent. My blankets are all in a pile. And I don't sleep that way. Well, maybe Xavier was looking for his weed. I missed my kids. Vivi finally answered yesterday for a brief moment. She seemed overwhelmed and... This has to stop. I don't, I don't understand. You guys, I had to get a cart. I literally felt like I was about to lay an egg when we got in the store. Yeah. Xavier's on his bike for some reason? This is exactly the size and style of the coffee table book that I'm creating. Okay. Oh, I like his gloves. Like this. Oh, I see you probably more with like the brief writings and I can take my blog posts, not all of them, but pieces of them matched with photo shoots, social justice, fashion, my, my own life experience, etc. But this is exactly what I have in mind. And this one's 324 pages and it's selling for $35 each. How much do you think it would cost to make a book like that, Heather? And you think you're going to sell like, it's no, there's no point. There's no point in getting the logistics about it, but it's it's not going to happen. It's not going to fucking happen. No publishing place like Penguin or I don't know any other book publishing people, Scholastic, is going to be like, yes, Heather, 
we like this concept. We will totally back your book. We'll uh, do the marketing for it. We'll get you on the New York's top selling list. Not going to happen. And she can't, she doesn't have the money. She's fucking homeless to do it herself. So this is a big waste of time. I'm sorry to say, Heather. It's a nice pipe dream, I guess. But maybe you should just, she would be better off baking cookies at this point. Go with the like government checks or your food stamps. Buy fucking flour and eggs and shit. Make them with the hair dryer. And that's like a um, an underdog story right there. You go on Shark Tank. There's lots of cookie companies that go on Shark Tank. Be like, these are my cookies. And it's like, what makes your cookies better than fucking Seamus Amos or whatever? It's like, I was in a tent cooking these with a fucking hair dryer, like uh, Easy Bake Oven style. And they'll be like, wow you're resilient and they'll give you a deal maybe maybe but it's way better than the coffee table book idea good morning you guys happy thanksgiving holidays always make me feel a little better um i'm working on creating tradition in my current circumstances so we're getting ready to go to the parade downtown um that should be fun i'm super irritated about an order from target that i ordered some pajamas that my son asked me for. My my children don't ask me for things. They are like afraid to ask me for things. No, they might just be afraid to talk to you in general. You were just in Target though. Why didn't you just buy them? Why'd you order them? Um, or where are you gonna get them shipped to? You live in a fucking tent. Not afraid, but like they feel bad because of what I'm currently dealing with. You know, so they don't want to put any additional stress on me. My son asked me for one thing, and it's like turning into a huge production. Thursday was the delivery, uh, delivery date. I mean, Tuesday. Then it was Wednesday. Maybe she hounded him, and she, he was just like, he felt bad. So she, he was, I'll give you the most easiest thing to get. I just want some pajamas. And she fucked that up somehow. And it was Thursday, and I said to him, wow, they're going to deliver some pajama pants on Thanksgiving? That's wild. Now it's Monday the 27th. It's coming from like a mile away from I assumed it was like a Target or a Walmart because of the rascal. I don't think like, does Walgreens have rascals for the, the bigger people? You guys look at how swollen and how much water I'm retaining in my legs specifically. We have to go for a walk. It's like, I need rest. I get exhausted and I'm cold. Look at this. So... What, what am I looking at? I just see your foot. There was one time. Uh, this story isn't going to be. Uh, I My ankles got really swollen. I should try to find those pictures because I got like fat. <laughs> Not like really fat, but like kind of fat. And then my ankles couldn't take it. And they got all swollen and it was weird and crazy. And then I was like, oh, I can't. I think I was just eating like a lot of Doritos and not moving. Just, just don't do that. And then you won't. Get fat. That side is with a compression sock. Above, you can see all the water retention. You can feel it. I don't. I don't see anything wrong with that ankle. We're finally ready, and oh, I think this is the day of the parade. Probably ten more minutes to put that over the top, and the parade has already started. So I'm trying to maintain a positive attitude, but I need to take my prenatal and I need something in my stomach. Otherwise I start getting sick and I need, I need, I need. I don't know how to live in the street effectively. I'm a bad street person. I am better inside. That is for sure. Aren't we all? All right, you guys. So I have not heard back from Alexis. I'm not really sure what's going on there yes it's terrifying yes i walk out there every month and drop off groceries and try to see her i've not been able to see her since may 26th it's thanksgiving day 2023 this has been the situation on and off since dylan's release from the idoc and he was inmate number y12173 and that's dylan smith um i've always been a person who had their own home lived inside where are you right now you're just in a park somewhere being like it's thanksgiving and i don't know where my kids are Help me. Like, what are we What are we supposed to do? What is this video accomplishing? I grew up in west sub suburb of Elmhurst. How is it Dylan's fault? Moved to the city around 20 years old and have always had my own apartment. Um, my older kids, I invited to come out here. I'm usually the one throwing Thanksgiving or going to my grandma's in Palatine. We call her Gigi. 
Um, but we haven't done that in three years. Also, ironically, since the release of Dylan Smith from the IDOC inmate number Y12173. Ironically, it's, it's all ironic. It's a big fishy coincidence. Me? No, man. So if you want to know why I always bring that up, it's because that is the marking point. There are five years of phone calls. That is the marking point. And when I say Alexis, I'm talking about my daughter. She's 10. I have a son who's 15 and a daughter who's 17, Viviana and Lewis. And it's just been extremely curious to me that communication has been so limited. Um, it go, Like I said, it goes on and off. They lived with me full time their entire lives. When all of this drama started with Dylan, um, I believe he's being used as a federal trap or in a federal trap and that our existence, that the existence of my children and I, uh, minus being involved, is in, is pro a problem for them. You know, they think we know too much, they tech box us or whatever the fuck they do. Um, either way, I'm trying to establish new routines for my holidays since you people have destroyed my life multiple times. Um, but yet here we are, ironically, dealing with the same antagonistic behavior. I've been up since 6.20 this morning saying, let's go, let's get ready, packing up the inside of the tent. But we're still trying to get the outside of the tent packed up. And it's now after the time. That what was on the outside of the tent? You got like fucking, it makes it sound like there's a whole picnic table or something. Like, what do you, the outside of the tent was terrible, guys. We got the inside packed up, not the outside. Again, what did you do to help here, Heather? Were you just like, let's get going, Xavier? Why are my fingers not snapping? There we go. Get to stepping. I got places to go. I don't even know where I'm going, but it's Thanksgiving. I got to see my kids that do not want to see me. That the parade started. Parade. Got to go to the parade. Oh, do we get to see some of the parade? That'd be nice. It's 10, 21 in the morning. I mean, like, you should be ahead of schedule. What's going on here? There's like five people outside in total. <laughs> what the fuck? The river's right there. It's 10, 15 in the morning. Usually the parade's going to like noon. It's empty as fuck out here. I think this is, this is it. <laughs> this is it. Okay. So that is the end of the stories um at least for this part and now we're gonna go into these live streams that apparently were pretty spicy um this is where the antenna thing this is where the whole thumbnail comes from that i made uh last night so these are pretty good these two live streams uh and then i have the rest of the stories from in between i guess like we, we watched a little bit after the live stream i don't even know um but that will be that and then I think like, yeah, I think we should be just at the right amount of time. Um, I do, <laughs> I just need to, I drank a lot of energy drinks. So I am going to take a quick smoke bathroom break. It'll be like five minutes tops. Um, I'll play some music for you guys and then we'll get right into this. And then at nine or a little bit after nine, um, I'm going to be hopping over to another stream um so yeah, let me get this just up here real quick and i will be back in a flash because this is this is some good shit i don't want to miss any of this um where's my music at there it is here it is all right i'll be two seconds guys
I did it right on time. <laughs> that was a happy coincidence. Oh, I can get rid of that completely? I mean, I don't really want to. Um, where is... All right, there we go. Take that off. We'll put this back up here. And... Can I really get rid of that? I can get rid of that. <laughs> I can get rid of all the comments if I want. I don't know why I would want to do that. Uh, I just didn't know I could do that. So, oh, I'm out of breath now. All right, let's get into This is some juicy shit. This is like the pinnacle, I think, of uh, this week's stuff. Uh, so buckle up. This is going to be some good stuff. I think the second one's a little bit better, but this is like the pre-show. Okay. Hi, you guys. Why? Thanksgiving belly. It does not even feel like Thanksgiving. It feels so weird. My, so this is the first year, I'm sorry, third year in a row that I have not gone to my grandma's house. You know, it is what it is. I'm about to have a baby and my hips and my, I'm definitely looking for solutions. All of my open cases with 311 have been closed, um, which makes me feel like this is more of a hostage situation than anything. Um, if they refuse to allow me to go through the public system of assistance after they're the ones who intentionally. Oh, this is glitchy. BCG, you're like, it's fucking, it's a glitchy mess. Hello, smitten kitten. How you doing? It's, I didn't pause it. Did I pause it? No, I didn't pause it. I should have edited these. Well, I didn't put it through the editor because these things don't work in the editor. In order to restabilize because they want to oppress. Um, there is no other reason. So, Stephen and I came to the Gwen. Um, this is everyone who's been following me since my days of shooting content uh, for GoPro Solo began. And Go what is that in the background? What is Xavier doing? Is he smoking weed? <laughs> Solo, if you don't know, is my production baby, where I um, pretty much host all of my photo shoots and creative think tanks and things of that nature. Um, being curated with also my writing. So if you've also been following since the many rear, which ended around, I want to say 2019. Is this like, does it get any better than this? <laughs> Should I just skip to the next one? Like, it's really good. She really good. She um, not because anyone wanted me to stop, but because I wanted to stop. Uh, I never really wanted to start to begin with, which you all know, if you've Oh, yeah. They're in a hotel, aren't they? This is in a hotel. Who put them in a hotel? Or did what their Xavier's dad do it? I might have to skip this one, guys. Maybe we'll just skip to like the middle. See if we get better. Um, we're still modeling. We're still doing all of this no. curating and whatnot. But now I'm taking blog posts that I write, poems that I write, song lyrics that I write, and combining them with photo shoots that I curate. Um, oh, okay. for this coffee table book. In addition to that, we're looking for realtors to partner with who have large listings. Um, so like for printing. So not, not necessarily using canvas, but printing and imposing these images upon other sorts of materials. My idea for the one that you guys see um, on the GoPro Solo page, a GoPro Solo production, if you're not already following, um, it's a large piece. It's about, I would guess, in real life, something like six foot by about nine by seven. 12 feet. Um, you just said five foot seven. Oh, she ups. <laughs> Xavier's got the right. This is Xavier's art, right? His fine art. It's it's definitely um, a lot taller than it is wide. It's a rectangle, but I would like to make it irregular, and I would like to do so with some sort of. Yeah, I mean, at least she pauses herself for me. I don't gotta pause. I could just, I'm caffeinated enough. I can be on the ball. I don't have much to say about this. I don't really know what we're learning, that she's loitering in a hotel and she wants to sell her fine art. It's this cauterized, irregular edging, um, and it would be a tremendous focal point for any living room, a uh, room of social socialization. It creates an NFT space almost, so to speak. Uh, um, so that's, that's kind of the focus. Now. It creates an empty space, so to speak? Is it just a blank fucking canvas? What is this? I never really, I guess it skipped over the part that actually describes it. I just know that it has like cauterized edging and 
it's six foot tall, but it's actually five foot seven by 12 foot that. I don't know what this is. Maybe I was gapped out at that point. <laughs> now I've been emailing um, a bunch of realtors in oh, this area and not having any real success. NFT makes may way more sense than empty space. Thank you. That's back. I don't know if it's because they have me in it. Just oh, she's, she's uh, glitching again. The average height. What, six foot? Six foot is the average height. Yes. It is. If you take out all the midgets and I mean all the small people and kids. I have I swear to God, guys. I didn't know that that was. Well, uh, and I've done a. A derogatory term derogatory yeah derogatory term a phenomenal job at getting my story out there along with all of the ways that people can collaborate if they want to help um, so I know it's not that back to Thanksgiving though it seems so dead out here I'm in Chicago um, four years ago I spent Thanksgiving here at the Gwen <laughs> three years ago I spent things uh, that's why we're back here because it's like memories Thanksgiving here at the Gwen. Two years ago, I spent Thanksgiving in my car. Last year, I spent Thanksgiving in an Airbnb where I cooked for Xavier and I. I was working full time at Gatier. Um, on this Thanksgiving, I was literally in a tent. Uh, and again, this is not because of unwillingness to work, nor am I incapable. I have been being oppressed for multiple years. I do want to press charges against everyone involved. The oppression that they have forced me to endure has resulted in numerous sexual assaults, uh, numerous... I don't know. That's what you, you guys have been telling me, Mud Pit, that I'm not supposed to be. I said it like four times. And then you guys, you were like, stop saying it. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. But I forgot. It slipped out that one time. But I'm learning, guys. I'm not the man I used to be. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't even know. I did not know. DoorDash, I have done 21 jobs uh, in the time that I have been being oppressed and forced out of my own home. Um, and each and every one of them have ended in some sort of weirdness. Um, my mother, as many of you know, Bonnie is the uh, president, vice president of purchasing for Export Fitness nationally. Um, and she always would help my sister get jobs. And I would always like be upset, like, why won't she get me a job? You know, I would love to work there. So I because you have like what by your own calculations 21 jobs in the past year or something like i wouldn't be recommending you for any job i don't think you would be able to keep it i would be questioning why you went through so many other ones just took it upon myself in 2017 18 to become a personal <coughs> trainer um i was prepping with a and with an npc um an if an npc a non-player character what are you talking about bb pro prep coach christian mccoy um and i was on a very very intense and strict diet and I was going to the gym two times a day and I had a phenomenal results. If you guys look at the last post I made um, where there's a three year difference between my leanest and how I am now, I'm well, I'm seven months pregnant now, but at my leanest, I was very, very lean, uh, very muscular and very lean. Um, and I did like a tiger, all of that from a six month postpartum state. So my child was six months old and I was in the gym at a, about 200 pounds and I'm five, nine. I've always been, you know, a very tall woman, but Xavier has to be blitzed out of his mind. What the fuck kind of plan was this? Let's just go sit in the Gwen <laughs> loiter there while I talk about this. Um, she was six months old and I was 200 pounds. And in a matter of four months, uh, no steroids, no medication, no nothing. Um, I was down to 150 and I was leaning out. Like it was my job to lean out. And everyone was approaching me saying, your bone structure and your body looks like you'd be more you know, inclined to compete wellness, but I wanted uh, to compete bikini. Um, so I kept at it and I kept at it. And um, eventually I got to where you'll see in 2019, but that was, I mean, a struggle. I had to go through four years of sometimes eating and prepping and doing what I was supposed to versus sometimes being forced to stay awake three, four days at a time, not allowed to sleep. And then who's keeping you awake? And I, I know, right? Xavier Shaka, you guys are like coming out for the Heather streams. I appreciate you. Miss Kelly is a fucking icon. Yes, indeed. <laughs> she, she wasn't taking Heather's shit. She knew her. 
being sexually assaulted and ignored by law enforcement after I would call them and ask them for help. Um, I filed hundreds of police reports regarding each of the matters. I have a paper trail so thick, um, it would burn the world down if someone lit it, lit it ablaze. And in addition to having all of those police reports, I also have medical records. So after I would be assaulted or, you know, something would take place. I you would uh, tell the officer you're not going to cooperate with him and just throw a bag of sheets. And that's that's what uh, I, that's what happened. I wonder what she's going to say, though. My house would be broken into. I would be dosed. I would go to the hospital and I would document it there. I would go to my private doctor and I would document it there and I would file police reports. And I've been doing this since 2016. We're in 2023 now, and I've still made no direct connection with law enforcement regarding any of these matters. Does anyone see a problem here? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, Heather. <laughs> if it did, if any of that were remotely true, there'd be some something. You'd have at least one win under your belt, I'd assume. Um, you need to check on it. I just left it on the corner. I told you to lock it. It is locked, but I just want to check on it. Look, the phone, I'll leave the phone in my gym. Okay. Um... That's code for, I need to get the, I can't listen to you anymore. I need to go do some drugs. I mean, I need to go check on something and the cart and the tent. So I'm going to leave you here to ramble. I'm going to go score some fentanyl and have a good time. So I'm really not in the mood, you know, for any more game playing. Um, if you guys have ever had to sleep on the floor while you're pregnant, it's very painful. She's, she thinks she's being held in this tent for some reason when it's just like she could leave any time. She, she just demands people fix all her problems for her. And the only person that is around her that could do it is Xavier, and he's not going to fix anything. Um, not at all enjoyable. But um, I, I, I lose hope, and then I get bored of being lost, you know, of hope, of being in a deficit of hope, so to speak, and I start again. Um, what more is there to do? You know, uh, there's really nothing. I document these things over and over again because, like I've always said, I believe that there's more evil in the world than there is, I mean, more good in the world than there is evil. I don't believe in evil. I believe all evil eventually falls, uh, and they fall ugly. And um, so when someone like myself, who is literally recruited by the United States government and forced into situation as what they refer to as an angel. Who, wait, 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 wait. When did this happen? When the fuck did this happen, Heather? So if there is some sort of criminal activity going on, they will find someone with no criminal background um, and kind of an education, and they will insert them as a mole. That doesn't make any sense at all. That wouldn't make any fucking sense at all. Why would the criminals just be like come do crimes with us teacher um who's educated and never had done a crime in their life this isn't suspect at all i yeah, come on let's go on the heist together um and i'm not the first nor will i ever be the last it's just we're talking about it more and more on social media these days and we have more channels of communication where we can do so um in the past like, it doesn't make any sense at all. Before social media, something like this could happen to you, and you didn't have the ability to reach more than who you, whoever was in your social circle. Once social media really took off, um, it started giving us the opportunity to discuss these things in the masses. And that was what people refer to as the grand awakening, um, where the most amount of people started looking around themselves and realizing, huh, I think the way that I've been told to live life is probably not going to work, um, you know, and this is why. Um, I think she's just being philosophical today. I don't really know what she's talking about, to be honest. As I always say, a lie cannot stand next to the truth and not be exposed. It will be exposed. Uh, and it is exposed. It's been exposed. I, I mean, I think she's going on about Dylan. And how Dylan ruined her life. But it's all like it's spoken very vaguely and in generalities because I think if she said it very, she said it directly, she sounded crazy and she knows it. So uh, that's kind of the background of how we got here. Now, to go from having Thanksgiving with my three children in, in a four star hotel 
you know, having a family staycation, watching movies and going over to Nordstrom and getting everyone a nice outfit and posing for Christmas pictures next to the tree um, to literally sleeping in my car that I had just gotten, you know, just paid off a Cadillac CTS for $15,000, my very first car note in my life. I had to have a, co a co-signer, Amy Bolin, who was my assistant at the time. Um, and I just remember this tremendous sense of pride. I know, right? See, it's it's pretty unbelievable. I would have never thought she'd be going on about diligence. And to go from that and having the car be your like most prideful thing to being separated from your children, not even having your car to sleep in anymore, um, you know, and being left outside in a tent going into year four, it's incredibly painful. The fact that I'm able to get up on Thanksgiving morning and even try to curate a meal especially while I'm pregnant, um, with no idea of what's going to happen, um, or, you know, who and why are, is trying to oppress me, it's really phenomenal. Um, and it goes to show you how strong the human psyche is when you have no other choice but to be strong. Uh, but I do want to press charges still. They're repeating the same fake curated set of, cir of circumstances over and over going into year four. Um, I don't feel like it's real. There's nothing going on in Chicago. The streets look empty. I, I miss my children terribly. Viviana texts me this morning. No, I understand. I talk to my children five, six times a day, usually every day. And then there will be this period where all of a sudden, all three of my kids are, I'm not able to talk to them. I'll call them and one out of three will answer at a time. And How many, like, how often are you trying to talk to them? You're not supposed to be talking to them, right? I don't know if she is or she isn't, but they don't want to talk to you. That's what I've been told. Um, I I don't know. I think she just like feels like she needs to be answered like every time like that because she's obviously has some kind of narcissistic traits. Um, I don't know if she's a narcissist. I'm not a psychologist. But I think she thinks obviously the world revolves around her. She thinks she could solve homelessness. They'll be really evasive and um, say everything's fine, mom, and not be very specific about anything. And while that's going on, other weird things start going on, i.e., I ordered my son a pair of pajama pants from Target for in-store pickup. Him and my mother-in-law go to pick them up. When they arrive, they say that the order was canceled. The money was still taken out of my account, and it still shows as a completed order on my end. But he drove all the way over there with my ex's mom, and they wouldn't give him the pajama pants. Several things come into play here. Number one, why is this happening? Number Maybe you ordered pajama pants and then canceled it, hoping that your fucking ex's mom would buy them for you if you made up this fucking story. And you're like, look, there'll be receipts because there was actually an order, but we'll just cancel it because we don't have money to pay for it. We want to buy drugs instead. Number two, why is this repeatedly happening to me? And number three, do you people understand that for someone with no vehicle who is raising someone else's children because they're being oppressed unlawfully, they don't have the most patience or resources to put him in the car and take him to Target. It's a pain in the ass. And for a child to have to ask someone that's not their parent to take them somewhere or do anything in the first place, it's not their place. My children should be with me. And if they need something, they should be able to say, mom, can you take me here? Can you do this? Can you do that? And that's it. You know, there is no negotiation about that. The way that you people have handled me is incredibly wrong. And I deserve every single penny that I have coming from restitution. Um, in 2022, I was bludgeoned. The $12 million and some, some, some weird number, but it was like 12 million and something dollars she thinks she's gonna get. And over the head with a tire iron for 2021 by a man named Juan Madero Romero. Um, I just found out. Juan Romero Madero? Or... Okay, okay, Heather. We'll find out eventually if that's just true or not, I'm sure. His name a few days ago. Why? Because I've been calling the state's attorney and police asking for an investigation to be conducted surrounding all of these random, uh, you know, attempts that I call them murder. Because if someone beats you with a tire iron until you're unconscious, that's to me an attempt at your life. So attempted murder. It wouldn't be murder. Um, yeah, 12 million eight hundred thousand two hundred dollars i don't know where she came up with that number i'm sure she was just like 
doing horrible math. Uh, you know, but I, I was beaten with this tire iron and I was taken to Elmhurst Hospital in an ambulance after being bludgeoned with all of these huge marks on my face and my head busted open. I needed staples in the back of my head. And that was the second violent victimization of my life. In 2019, I was jumped and stabbed by three women after leaving a visit to see Dylan. The state's attorney. No, you, we know it wasn't jumping. If, if you got anyone new here, which I can't remember what stream it was. I think two streams ago, we went over like the actual report of what happened and she instigated all of that. She like, they were running away and she chased after them and she spat on them and she said, I want all the smoke. So like, no, she wasn't jumped. She was fucking followed or followed them to the gas station and started an incident. They were just pumping gas. Um, Heather was being crazy. He did nothing in either case. The state's attorney has not contacted me in either case. I am not an undercover officer. If I am being human trafficked as one or as a mole, I have verbalized hundreds of times through live broadcasts that I would like it to stop immediately, that I've neither given my permission nor consent to be used for any of those purposes. Here we still are four years later. Make it make sense. Um, we're living in a, in a time period where all of the laws of the Constitution don't make sense. And people telling me that we are um, being taken over is, in my opinion, part of a PSYOP. What do I mean by that, being taken over? Well, on my social media, they will show me only content that supports whatever their claim is. So if they're trying to get people, and this is what a PSYOP is, if they're trying to get people to believe in being gay. Um, they if they, what do you mean? What do you, there, there's a psyop to make people gay. Is this what? Oh, because Xavier's kind of gay and he's like trans because I think he probably sucks dick for crack or whatever the fuck he does. Um, is that what we're talking about here? Like, I don't, where the fuck does it come from? They start with extortion and then they flood their influence with a lot of gay rhetoric. Gay rhetoric. What the, what is what classifies gay rhetoric? Sexual rhetoric. Um, it's targeted and it's intentional. That's what Xavier is always referring to as a psyop. They do it for gay people. They do it for poor. Xavier, I think you're gay. I'm not gay, honey. It's a psyop. Get with the times. I have a fucking antenna and button on me. People. They do it for rich people they create narratives that are only true for a select demographic and then they have trouble when those demographics start crossing paths in real life so if you have someone who has been led to believe through experience through social media through um, influence that the world is one way and then you have another group that is led to believe the exact opposite um, and you intermingle them, problems begin to arise. And as I said before, prior to social media, there was a degree of separation between the classes that cannot be kept with social media. So you want segregation. Tether, what the fuck? She was just going on like, oh, racism's bad. You shouldn't base things out the color of your skin. I thought she was a little clunky with how she was saying it, but like, this just sounds like you can't get along with anyone who has a different viewpoint than you and you're scared of their viewpoints and they're going to infect your brain because you can't like be around someone with different sexual preferences or just different opinions. And are you crazy, Heather? Well, yeah, she is crazy. I don't know why I'm saying this, but like Heather, I thought she was better than that. I don't know why, but I thought she was a little better than that. Crazy lady. I knew she said like the N word. I thought she said it because she thinks it makes her cool or something. She might be racist, guys. I think she's racist. Or at least homophobic. Um, with social media being so prominent in today's society, the secrets that people kept as secrets unintendedly, they become public common knowledge. And now everyone who is sleeping, meaning unaware, their eyes are open and they're looking at the same set of people who they once looked up to. And they're saying, I'm supposed to trust you you're supposed to be an idol of mine, but you couldn't care less if me and my children and my family have even had a meal today. It's not their responsibility. That's your responsibility. Would you expect them? Like, would you, 
Okay, if they expected you to pay for their shit and their meals, would you not think that's kind of weird? Would you not be like, ah, I can't feed myself. Why should I feed you? Everyone's struggling. Everyone's going through their own shit. What the fuck are you talking about? I can't get behind that. And so social media didn't did not create the problem. You weaponize social media. If it weren't for social media, you wouldn't have anything. You'd have nothing at all because that's where you get all your donations. Like, how can you be trashing the one thing that gets you anything in life? You're an e-beggar. Social media exposed them. Um, and that's kind of what I have been forced my to talk about and deal with. Um, you can believe and rest assured wholeheartedly that my intention was to, as I said, and as we planned, move far away from here once Dylan was done working his deals or whatever involvement he had with the United States federal government. Um, I witnessed the deal being you know, made in Skokie, Illinois in 2015. I saw him sign it and I have a copy of the proffer. Um, it's uploaded to my cloud um, along with many other records. How do you explain that? How do you make sense of that? The deal was supposed to be finished and I was supposed to move far away from here with my children and my husband. Instead, what happened is they began what they call renewing energy. And when Dylan got out of prison, he was forced by the criminal justice system to re-engage with really nasty people, really bad guys. And Okay, I don't, what is this renewing energy? I always think it's going to be the solar panel thing that Dylan was talking about when he was on Love After Lockup and the door-to-door uh, -to -door sales stuff, right? But then she goes on about like criminal activity and all this other stuff like is being renewed energy. Is she, I don't know. I don't know what she means by that. And gals who have given up on themselves. And by bad, what do I mean? I mean... Uh, they are hope they feel hopeless they've lost sight of any morals or values or integrity for the law because then like i guess that is like an mlm but then no one i guess i'm assuming she meant they like the justice system or you know what i mean as part of his probation had to go get a job and they recommended this job but no it's an i know it's an mlm because it's fucking it's D Dylan's like the CEO or something now, isn't he? Like, or head recruiter or some shit. And he doesn't do anything. Like, Dylan's his own character. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I don't think we can cover Dylan. Because if they have morals and values and integrity with the laws that most of us follow, they'll die. Because we've created a society where these people are so shunned, so poor, so lacking, so living in lack that sometimes they don't even have money for food. So they can't live by the same ethical conduct and, and moral uh, guidelines that the rest of us live by or they'll literally starve. Um, and in my opinion, I forgot to make a bingo card for you guys, but I do need to put that on the, she does that a lot though. What does that mean? Or what do I mean by this? And it is, it's like a teacher thing. As much as social media can expose uh, people for supposedly doing the wrong thing, it can expose them for doing the right thing. And it can also expose them for doing the wrong thing for the right reasons in an effort to shed light on why and create solutions. Um, so I'm still confused as to why, uh, I've had two years with no harassment and now, uh, we're in 2023 and it seems like the same group of losers who launched all of these libelous and slanderous smear campaigns from 2019. Is she talking about fucking love after lockup or just the internet in general? Are back in action. Um, my tooth, I whiten my teeth. Um, what about it? Uh, my insurance doesn't cover um, me to have this tooth pulled and have veneers on. Uh, it's a crown on my front tooth. You in these comments have sent about 50 different photos of a tooth. It's Thanksgiving Day and you're sitting on my live video harassing and libeling me in the same way that you have been for the past four years. In the same way that law enforcement has been. But this is like high school shit. Like you should know how to deal with this kind of. I don't trolling. What would you call it? It's just people being mean online. It's a very, 
it's like the minimal thing. Like you've done way worse shit, Heather, that you could be criticized for, like the fucking the Rico of the twins. Um, but you're worried about someone sending you a picture of your tooth? Like that's what you're choosing to complain about? Watching that the Like if you were innocent of that, like if that really wasn't a, a you know an abortion, then You'd think that would bother you more than they're sending a picture of my tooth. The FBI has been aware of and no one has done anything to stop or prevent. The things that you say are slanderous and liable to my business, to my ability to support myself. There is a dollar amount for that. There is a dollar amount for that. And once it gets crossing over into a way where you're affecting my physical safety, um, which it has numerous times, now there is a prison sentence associated with that. Do you understand that? No. Um, I don't understand. It. You cannot continue to put someone in, in harm's way through what you uh, perpetuate on social media. Fully aware, because I'm sitting here on how many hundred, 200 live videos explaining everything that's happening. Um, uh, is this where it cut? Hold on. Let me see. This is where it cut. All right, so let me get this other one up here. So she comes back crazier. I'm getting the bingo card up for you guys, though, real quick. Um, holy shit. There's 117 of you in here. How are you all doing? Um, bingo. I'm just going to say bingo. Bongo. No, bingo. And pin it. So there you guys go. I forgot to do that earlier. I do apologize. Let's get rock and roll. Please do not dirty that book. So anyways, you guys, yesterday I received a call from someone named Alexandra from um, Ascension, who is supposedly a client uh, advocate. So I'm trying to come up with reasons to be thankful since it's Thanksgiving. Um, she said that she definitely has doctors at St. Joe's, which is near where we are. As you guys know, Xavier's father lives in the Gold Coast, and that was my last uh, place of residence. Um, and it was temporary. It was about a month we were there. Prior to that, it was 2037 West Roscoe and Roscoe Village. So I have no way to receive uh, any donations. People have been sending me maternity clothes, makeup, all sorts of... Wait, how have you been getting donations? <laughs> what are you talking about? You have no way to get no donations. And yeah, it's... Thanksgiving bingo. They never reach me. Whoever is in that apartment is stealing them, um, which I've also filed police reports about. The same people who are doing that also stole my bin from in front of Xavier's father's house with my laptop on it, all my clothing, my makeup, all of my things, my yoga mat, my production equipment. And that was a year ago. I want to know how I continue to go live um, with all of this information where... <laughs> I'm presenting facts of abuse, facts of rape, facts of robbery, and... But there are no facts to it, so that's kind of a lie. They just keep up, the list just keeps growing. You know, nothing, they're never addressed. Where are the, where are the police? Are the police out of business? If the police are out of... The police are out of business, Heather, yep. Business, where are the feds? Are the feds out of business? Right. So what really is the situation in the United States of America? And I don't it's like James telling the fucking grocery store person. There is no cops in California. All right. These aren't the droids you're looking for. I don't think I'm um, wrong for asking them. I think I'm absolutely right to be openly and honestly asking this question. And some of us, as I read on a sign the other day, cannot afford to be silent. For some of us, for some of you, you're, you're thinking, oh, if I like, the, if I enjoy the quality of my life, I, I better just be quiet and sit with this information. Well, what about for everyone who your silence is forcing into oppression? What about that? What about when you're the one sitting in a? Your silence is forcing people into oppression. How so? Oppression. Um, if you don't have basic morals and values, I think that Thanksgiving is a phenomenal day to really examine yourself and be honest with yourself. Um, what are you thankful for? Do you deserve it? Um, and are you living your lifestyle in a way that's congruent with your own success as well as the success of others? Uh, I know for a fact that... Yeah, if you're a bad person, think about how bad you are. Fucking 
I almost said Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving. And uh, I think people just eat, eat and visit family. I am. Um, so with all of these unanswered questions, with all of these solutions that I've presented for all of these situations, including poverty at a, at a you know, grand scale, um, why is there no action being taken? And why is there no direct communication? And what is the correlation between all of this that I'm living now and the supposed preparation from being at Tranquility Bay in Jamaica for all of those months? There are just... She's just like all over the place. She's just like going through a fucking time warp. So many issues. Um, as I said, Xavier and I woke up this morning planning to go and intending to go to the Thanksgiving Day Parade downtown Chicago. Um, we came down here and there was nothing going on. We arrived about an hour late, about 10 a.m. The live entertainment was set to schedule or was scheduled to begin at 8 a.m. Um, it didn't begin until a little after that, supposedly. I love how Heather... Homeless Heather is worried about the schedule of the parade. This is like the, on the forefront of her mind on things that haven't happened fucking years ago. She's like, you know what happened? They didn't fucking schedule. They didn't start the parade on time. The festivity is like, uh, oh my goodness. Um, and then it was supposed to go through nine. At nine, the parade was supposed to begin and go through about noon. As I said, we are just on the other side of the river and there's maybe five people outside, you know, on every block. This is so abnormal for Chicago and I just have to question, is this an economy issue? Uh, is this an issue of heating and cooling, if you know what I mean? Is this an issue of um, my own, where I am being intentionally put into situations that I cannot decipher? Meaning, is this real? Is this normal? Is this pre-planned or curated? Have you guys ever heard of a flash mob or a flash dance? Y yeah, I've heard of a flash mob or a flash dance. Also, like this is this isn't how a normal person thinks. Like usually, you make a bad decision and then consequences happen. And you're like, shit, I shouldn't do that again. Heather is like, this must be some nefarious plot against me. You know, it must be there must be some higher entity pulling the strings like what do you what okay but uh, what's a flash mob have to do with anything um just as easily as they create those they can create the opposite of those they can create the illusion of abandonment um and i have dealt with that numerous times uh, and it's been really scary and really wild um so i guess my question is in an, on a day like today today where I look back and think of how grateful I've been um, and how even though I never really got to see my family on a regular basis because I lived in Chicago and they lived scattered throughout you know north and west uh, suburbs I saw them on holidays which was not enough but I am grateful that I was able to as I said four years ago the very first Thanksgiving I spent here at the Gwen um, a friend of mine Sammy Habibi um, he had nowhere to go on Thanksgiving and he drove me in his suburban with my children from here at the Gwen to my grandma's house in Palatine. And he had a meal with us and he kind of got a behind the scenes look into my family and what was going on at that time. I don't, whoa. I don't know what this guy has to do with anything. I don't know what just happened to my career. I hope it doesn't crash again like that one day. But like, what is she hoping to get out of this? Is she just, she doesn't want to be outside, I guess. So she's like, well, someone stole our extension cord. I got, can't heat the tent. So I'm just going to ramble in here. Do you think they're going to overhear her and be like, I feel really sorry for Heather. Let's just give her a room. I don't think that's going to work. Um, and that was the last time I got to see my family for a holiday. Ironically, two months, or sorry, four months after that is when Dylan was released from prison. So when you try to say that there's no correlation between my life destructing and Dylan, it's impossible to say that. I think you're being very generous, Mission School. <laughs> she looks like the same old other to me. Because everything that began to happen in my life began with his release. Um, I had never been in a fistfight so much as a fistfight prior to 2019. In 2019, I was jumped and stabbed. My home was intentionally flooded twice. My belongings were stolen out of my home. Um, I had to move. I was bullied out of my home where I lived legally. Um, and every time I'd go to law enforcement, where you lived illegally? Is that what she said? 
Okay, no, it is zoomed all the way out. She's just off center, I guess. And they just would do nothing. So as you began to voice your suffering in a way that forces people to pay attention, um, people have a way of negating your experience by making allegations against you or saying that you are seeing things or hearing things that don't really exist. Be careful with that. Be very careful with that. Yeah, if you actually start hearing things that don't exist, you should go get checked and not blame everything on everyone else and refuse help like Heather does. Um, be grateful, you know, for what you have, but be very, very careful in settling. Uh, what that was one picture, skeleton. It was one random Google picture that you showed me, and I was like, that doesn't even look like Heather. That looks more like Winona Ryder, and I'll stand by that. I don't know where the picture is, but if I showed it, if I pulled it up, people would agree with me, I swear. We allow and um, get used to uh, what we tolerate becomes the norm. Um, as, you, as you sit in a space and you notice the way that you're treated, you're respected or you're not, you're ignored or you're uh, embraced, you're made fun of and ridiculed or you're loved and uh, validated. Move from the spaces where, or take action in the spaces where you are not validated in your most basic being, which is bare minimum basic amounts of respect that every single life form is deserving of. Um, the more we ignore them, the more that we pretend like everything is fine, the more we create and set new standards. I'll find the picture. I'll I'll get it while this is playing. And I will I'll show you guys. You'll agree with me, I think. I think for what fine looks like. Um, if I decide if I decided ever to stop talking about what was going on with me. Um, the message that I'm sending the universe is that I'm okay with being held in a tent against my will and all of the other oppressive measures that have been done unto me, which I am not. So I will continue to discuss it publicly until a resolution has been reached. Uh, and that goes the same with anything. If you're in an abusive relationship, um, you know, if it's a friendship, whatever it is, the more you tolerate, the more normal it becomes and you train others how to how to treat you um xavier does certain things in a relationship because he knows that i value monogamy and a traditional gender role so if you're in a relationship with someone for 16 months and they understand that you value monogamy and traditional gender roles they have the information they need to treat you how you want to be treated to treat you in a way that's in line with your moral and legal state when arguments become an issue or when uh, dis-ease, disruption begins, it's because one or both parties is taking the expectation that has been clearly communicated. Because if, if the expectation hasn't been accepted or tolerated, then there's no arguing. It's just disagreeing. Like, hey, you're not going to treat me like that. I don't. It's not that way. Once the expectation has been communicated and you know how the person expects to be treated, I already had it, but look, I got the picture, okay? It's, this is the picture. And she does kind of look like Winona Ryder instead of, she doesn't look like Heather here. I don't think she looks like Heather here. Do you think she looks like Heather? I think that's some kind of crazy filter or it's not Heather. It's something else. I don't know. Down here, maybe, these two, Heather. Oh, you guys can't see that. Hold on. Let me get that down. Those are Heather, for sure. But this one? I don't know. Maybe I have face blindness. But in this one picture, I think she kind of looks like Winona Ryder. Um, and I'll stand by that. I that's Those are the facts. I don't make the rules. Then you wake up one morning treating them completely different. Again, something is going on with that is the person rolling on you because they're being incentivized financially to do so is the person rolling on you because someone has honey potted them sexually is the person rolling on you because they're being extorted? that picture was from the one this one 
This one was from the Gwen? That would be very um, fitting if it was. That was not intentional. That's crazy. Where did sexually? Um, the whole psyop that I refer to as the evil game, um, that is a group of men who had no choice in many cases, but to engage in illicit sexual contact with men who were mostly straight to use for extortive purposes. Dude, why don't she's whispering this because it's very it's she's in the fucking hotel lobby, I guess, but like my goodness. And that's the flip side of the honey pot. So the federal government employs the use of honey pots, which means they will find someone who looks good, sounds good, acts good, talks good, and they'll send them in towards that target. And once they gain the affection of that person, they princess them. So then they make them think that they agree with everything they say, that they share the same opinions, and that they, you know, are on their side. Doing so only disarms the victim. Uh, doing so only makes the victim believe in a fake sense of trust and expose themselves for who they think the other person wants them to be. But that's not what's communicated in a courtroom. What's communicated in a courtroom is the person supposedly exposing themselves for who they truly are. It's not that way. The only way you could see who a person truly is, is if you observe them with no external influence, with no external coercion. That's the only reliable way to ever know who someone truly is. What does someone do when there is no one watching, when there is no one else around? When I guess you're going to have to set up secret security cameras, but I don't, I don't know. I guess I just take vitamins and you got to eat a lot of meat and cheese <laughs> and uh, corn and potatoes and rice, I guess. So sushi, sushi. I don't know. I'm not a very healthy person. All right. <laughs> I don't think like I'm living my most healthy life over here, but I, I could buy. I could buy. Um, I think it'll be OK. Just keep following whatever the doctor said. I don't have a doctor, so like I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. As long as I get it to the next day, I'm happy. When you add in that antagonist, you're losing your case, period. Now you have a coerced, influenced, uh, persuaded, or any other number of you know colorful vocabulary that we could use to fill in the blanks there. And you're looking at exonerations that are probably not deserved. There are a lot of deserved exonerations, a lot of them. Um, and I'm super grateful that I was given a voice and the opportunity to speak on a lot of this uh, stuff because we are treating everyone the same when we are not the same. Equality to me does not mean we are all the same. Equality means we're all deserving of the same. We all deserve the same basic uh, baseline for human treatment. We all deserve indoor housing. We all deserve showers. We all deserve food. We all deserve families. We all, de we all have the right to procreate. How is her version of equality different from the other equality? Um, we all have the right to keep our bodies and homes clean. We all have these rights. When those simple rights are taken away. I don't think she does stop talking, to be honest. Like, I think she just, even when she's off live stream, she just is talking to Xavier like, that, 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 that. we got to do this, we got to do that. She never does anything, but she talks like nonstop. I love that one clip where fucking uh, Collective Soul is playing in the background and she's on the ground being like, I need an energy drink from my throat. And if, if you're just like throws a fucking blanket over, it's like, just get out of here. That's what I feel like every day is with them. There is no baseline. Now we have a society where any treatment is acceptable. Um, and the laws don't matter in, in place of ethics, in my opinion. Uh, if you cannot find a way to work ethically and legally together, then you have no partnership uh, and you have no you know, society. You have, no, you have nothing. Uh, you have to find a way to make the laws work with the ethics. Now, why is this important? Because when we're talking exonerations, we're, we're, we're using the term equality to our benefit. We're saying, well, you want everything to be equal. And that's one of the biggest arguments they throw in their face in such a condescending sending way you know it's patronizing oh well, you want everything to be equal well yeah then give me the same access to the ten thousand dollar an hour lawyer that you have that got you off your uh criminal charges what criminal charges do you have i thought you were a criminal i thought you were recruited 
to be um, a mole with no criminal fucking background. Usually they try to get someone who's like, they have, yeah, like a criminal, like Dylan, who already has charges. They'll like lower their sentence if you go snitch on some people, but they wouldn't get just a regular civilian to go be a mole. Like, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe they do things differently these days. And now we can talk about e equality. How many people are sitting in prison either for crimes they didn't commit, crimes they committed as, re as a result of oppression, setups, or because they couldn't afford good legal counsel? So we're designing a society um, where recidivism is the only option for a good majority of us. How many men and women come out of prison to nothing and no one? And so the only option they have to meet their needs is to reoffend. I mean, I wake up talking too, and my job is pretty much all talking. So that's why it's nice listening to Heather, because she can, uh, it's nice to hear her go. But uh. We are profiting, and this Thanksgiving, as I said, I have to be grateful for my voice. Um, we are creating a construct of society where we are more and more tolerant of blatant disregard for morals in place of, of laws blatant disregard for ethics in place of laws. So maybe it's time to reinterpret our constitution. And maybe it's time to reinterpret you know, life as, as, as it stands in the 23rd century. Is this the 23rd century? No. I'm it's the 21st century, right? Yeah, it's the 21st century. Am I wrong? No, it's, yeah, holy fuck. She's making me question my reality now. What makes you think we're in the 23rd century? We're not even in the 22nd century. It was like the 20th century, I think, in the, 19, in the 1900s, right? And then we got to the year 2000, and then it was the 21st century, because it was like 20th century Fox, and then it went to 21st century Fox, right? That's how I know. Um, there's no, we're not in the 23rd century. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you were. Yeah. What? Uh, 21st. 21st century. Like at least Xavier knows. Thank God. Because as I said before, um, we all have video cameras in our hands now. We can all prove our innocence in most cases. If you look hard enough, if you even the poorest of individuals with an electronic device can protect themselves, where do you go and what do you do? It, it's probably pretty difficult for a person with no home to remember where they slept or didn't sleep on any given date, right? That's not what the state's attorney says when they're questioning them. They say, oh, so you mean to tell me that conveniently on Wednesday you don't know where you slept? And the jury being a group of people who probably have never dealt with homelessness before they think in their minds yeah the state's attorney is right this guy must be a liar how does he not know where he slept well guess what there's a whole other side of america can't you just say no because i was homeless then the jury would like it'd be pretty i don't know i don't even know what she's trying to prove here you know get familiar with it get familiar with it and that's what the internet is doing. And that's what social media is doing. And what's happening is- Oh, we like social media again now, okay. That the people are are, are forced to engage with one of two paths. Um, everyone tries to ignore it at first, everyone, because they speak on it in a way that is- uh, Authoritative. Not authoritative, it's faking concern. Condescending would be a good word for it. Um, they, they speak, they go to these rallies. It's like the one photo I took that I believe is one of the best shots I've ever taken. There's a young lady with a big Afro. Um. Does she want to be a photographer? Cause like she should take pictures then and try to sell it to like, do newspapers still exist? I don't know. Um, online web stuff that would need photos or you could put them like upload them to, um, what the fuck are like there's sites that i'll use to get like copyright free stuff but there's also stuff that you can pay like a little bit of money like a dollar to use and then you get the rights to it um she could do that why don't you do that heather um of hair she was probably mixed maybe white 
maybe Hispanic, and she was hanging out of a car window during the BLM protests. And she had a sign that said, dismantle these oppressive uh, systems. And Sell that to National Geographic. What really, you know, does that girl know about these oppressive systems? Has she ever spent a night outside? Probably not. <laughs> you know, probably not. She's right. And this could be your pitch to National Geographic. Think about it. Who, do you really know what this person's thinking? This picture is telling a story. Riding around in a Lexus or a Mercedes or, you know, some it's car. One, it's one of the best her and, her, her and her two or three girlfriends. And they're just, ooh, they're out for the protest, you know? And they're out here kind of spreading, spreading apart this message that they don't know how to understand. Um, it's one of the best pieces of documentation of the time. Just, the photo? Yeah, not just of your film or not of your photography it's one of the best documented photos of that thank you it's one of the best photos documenting that time of all time of all time that's a huge compliment heather she's just like I know. Okay, thank you. And let's go back into the cycle ramble. It's a really good photo. I'm really proud of myself for taking it. That is one of maybe 20 that will be in my coffee table book. Um, so that's really exciting. Uh, I, I'm very, very excited, as I said, to share that with you all uh, coming up here soon. I expect it to be, if you guys saw the GoPro solo production page, I, I pulled a Dolly Parton coffee table book from the um, shelves at Target yesterday. And the size of the book... Aha! They were at Target. Why didn't you buy the pajamas while you were at Target, Heather? And you're rascal. And said you're like, look at this book. I'm going to copy this book, but it's going to be all my psycho dribble in there, and no one's going to buy it. And then I'm going to be sad. Hello, that's never going to get made. Book, along with the thickness of the book, it was about 324 pages. Really high quality. And the combination of her digital photograph um photography mixed with props mixed with blog pieces mixed with um title statement style font and phrases and then paragraphs of elaboration uh is exactly where I, i'm going with with this idea for the coffee table book it is exactly where i'm going and there are a lot of photos from black lives matter that i that i personally experienced witnessed um, and walked down the street taking these photos. And that's one of numerous um, social justice issues that I discuss or that I use visuals to um, evoke thought. Uh, and it's not evoke thought. Yes. Yes. With that face. Deep in thought. Just Black Lives Matter. There's a lot about classism. Oh, heard of me. There's a lot about classism. There's a lot about elitism. There's a lot of, about um, both unethical and ethical versus legal and illegal opportunity. Um, and all of this is depicted in, you know, and then there's the funner stuff where it's just, you know. The, what, is this just going to be scattered all throughout? Is there going to be chapters? It's going to be separated? It'd be like, this is the dark side of the cop. You can flip it. You could have a light side and a dark side, you know? Maybe you could have two different versions. Uh, fucking, you should leave all the sexy stuff out. <laughs> you want it to be on the fucking coffee table. Um, but that's just my opinion. I mean, she wants to put a thing about the pumpkin booty, pumpkin booty fucking thing in there. Probably that uh, that Sunday thing. Uh, part of my series is uh, beauty is in contrast. And there are many photos I've taken myself as the medium as well as just whatever environment i'm in my surroundings as the medium um that explain what i mean by that without using any words and i love doing that as well i love to write uh i've been writing song lyrics uh verses <coughs> choruses <coughs> poems phrases metaphors blog posts um i want to know more about the songs i'll, I'll write a song with that later. short stories and i'm 424 pages into my very own novel um, I've attended writing seminars. So the coffee table book is a collaboration of all my greatest ideas um, revised and married together with the form of a book. other mediums that I've personally created or been involved in to form a collection of the times. 
Um, there's stuff about Bitcoin, Ethereum. Um, there's stuff about how reason. I will not run out of time. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere until this is at least done. Um, I don't know if they're expecting me on like right when their stream starts. I hope not. <laughs> I haven't got a link or anything, so like I'm, I'm good. If they, if they want me to come on and have people come over to there, um, then yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like dip, dip at nine. I just like around that time is when I'll have to go. But how long? How much more do we got of this? I got ten minutes. I was gonna say like. I need to pee again. So like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. We're just going to keep going. Reasonable it is, especially with social media and the advances we have in communication at our fingertips, um, how plausible and realistic it is that we would have a society that didn't rely on money, cash money anymore. A society where we incentivize people for good behavior. What is good behavior? Instead of having a prison system that lets people out into a dangerous world for acting right, how about we just reward them for existing and not creating violence? How about we just reward them? You get paid to not commit crimes? That, in a perfect world, right? I don't think that's how it works. Them for existing and pursuing their hobbies and passions. How about that? And that is through operation, as I refer to it, Kill Bill and the evolution of digital currency. Um, and I look forward to, you know, others getting involved in, in that idea. And I know that that's been going on for, you know, a very long time. So I'm excited for this book to come out and I'm, I'm thankful, you know, that I have been able to work on that. But everything else, you guys, uh, is, is not good. Um, and that's the, that's the main part that always jumps into my mind. It's like, how do you remain positive when your three most important people, your children who you've birthed. All right. Yeah. I will be like, like two minutes. All right. I'll be... <laughs> Cause we do like, we're probably going to go for another 20 or 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, give me like, sorry. I drank a lot of crap because I woke up early today. I worked all day. I got to go on this other stream after. So I'm kind of going crazy, but I will be super quick. I'll put, I'll put some, what the the lo-fi driving music that's a good thing this isn't my sound but this is just some fun boo, boo, boo. i'll be super quick <laughs> sorry guys no more breaks that'll be the last break i am sorry um okay so let's keep this going because this is like normally if it was just like the stories or something or something like um 
I would have just put like on my phone and like ran into the washroom. But this is like the crazy good part. So I don't want to miss any. <laughs> so I want to see it like in real time. Earths out of your birthing canal um, are being kept away from you. Um, how do you remain positive when yeah, you don't know where you're going to sleep at night sometimes? <laughs> most of the time. How do you remain positive when you wake up either to the intentional illusion of sexual assault having occurred or uh, real sexual assault having occurred? What do I mean by that? Uh, different things, you know, different things, pain in different areas. Um, markings and, and strategic placement of bruising and other things. There are a lot of things, and I've documented them thoroughly. Um, but as I always say, uh, this is to document, to remember where I was. By document, she means, like, just talk about it with no actual actual documentation or evidence. What the fuck is happening with that? One of my wheels is cut. Um, kind of like Letitia. Where I've been, where I'm going. Um... I do believe there needs to be a criminal justice system, just not an oppressive one that people's innocent relies on hundreds of thousands of dollars or access to such funding. Um, I do believe that we should have, and, and again, in the absence of poverty, you don't have any of these issues with criminal justice. Um, you know, there's just crazy people out there that commit crimes for the fuck of it. Some people are just crazy. I mean, I do agree to her to some extent. Like, obviously, I think a majority of criminals or at least criminals in the lower class are doing so just to get by. Um, but there's also people who just don't want to work, who are drug addicts, who are going to want to fucking do this instead, you know? If no one can be incentivized to fight for someone's innocence with the incentive of money, then innocence becomes the only incentive or the only... Um, Innocence becomes, you can't call someone guilty when they're innocent if you can't pay. Okay. It's innocent until proven guilty. That's, that's how things go. You could just say that. I think that's what she's trying to get across here. Okay. How do, how do I say this? If there is no one whose child's college fund relies on your innocence, they're not incentivized to prove your innocence by any means necessary. And when we remove the financial necessity behind the state of Illinois, and then following that, the ego. Um, how many state attorneys do you know that are walking around and lawyers that are walking around bragging? I've won 780 convictions this year. And I've put 800 bad guys behind bars. I call cap on that. I don't believe that one second. That's ego, you know? That's their fucking big mind. We don't want people going to prison and your conviction rate high if those people are innocent. If you're working with the Lord. I think that was all hypothetical, I guess. I have a Christmas pumpkin. That's a Christmas pumpkin. It's white. It's got a spider on it right now with a pterodactyl on top. Um... And I'm probably going to forget the car of it, but I don't know. I don't think I'm going to put a tree up this year, though. It's too much work. Um, maybe I'll get a little Charlie Brown Christmas tree for the table back there. <laughs> I'm supposed to be in the other office, to be honest. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I got to get my shit together. <laughs> lawyer who costs $40,000 an hour, and that's one end of the argument, and the other end of the argument is someone with a public defender... What do you think? You think the public defender is going to be employing hit teams or hackers? No, to protect their client, absolutely not. But the forty thousand dollar client an hour, you think that lawyer is going to be doing anything to retain that business? Absolutely, they are. Which means putting a gun in someone's hand and saying, "Take someone's life." Which means, you know, and all the lawyer's going to recommend to do this. The lawyer. All of these things. So when you remove money. When that for I think that would make the lawyer's job extremely harder. <laughs> so just go tell his client to go commit more crimes. I think we need to add some more crimes to this. All right. My job isn't, I feel like it isn't hard enough. All right.
$40,000 an hour becomes accessible to the person living in poverty and the public defender begins protecting the, the person who has been historically able to pay $40,000 an hour for their defense, the tables turn, the world flips, and not in a good way. Not in a good way always. There is some really good, really good public defenders, bro. They're like the worst people on this planet because they will get people off of murder for fucking nothing. For nothing. Like, they're... They're the appointed lawyer. Like, they're free. The, uh, the people who commit a murder don't have to pay for him. And I'm like, what the fuck is your incentive to do that? Everyone deserves proper legal representation. Yeah, but if you know he committed fucking murder, and you're just, I'm just really good of a job. I think I'm going to get someone off with murder today. I can't respect you. Like, what the fuck is that? So, I don't know. She's not even right about this. Like, <laughs> there. I don't, I don't want to name any lawyers. Because I don't want, I don't want the heat, but <laughs> I don't want the smoke. They're lawyers, you know. But uh, no, there's some shitty fucking lawyers out there who will get you off of bad things for free. You know, just because someone didn't do a crime that they're being convicted of doesn't mean that they need to flip their social standing. They don't probably have the experience to handle it. They probably are not going to be an asset to that same group. So there's a lot of it that comes into play. But at the very, very least, I, I just need to have an understanding of how it could be possible for the past four years of my life to go by with so much victimization and so little involvement and communication from any authority. Um, and that's kind of, you know, it. And it's never going to go away. I have three children. My responsibility is to them and only them. And when you're standing in my way of feeding my kids, of clothing my children, of, you know, putting them to bed each night, what more do you want me to talk about? Um, so it's Thanksgiving and luckily we've had access to electricity. We've been using blow dryers to stay warm because I'm a borderline anemic person. My fingertips and my toes get so cold that I literally like will cry in pain. In addition to that, my hips and my tailbone are in so much pain. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I have a history of intolerance to ibuprofen um, and acetaminophen. I could take it once, but if I get into like two, three times taking it or alternating, I get very, very sick to my stomach. Um, so I smoke pot for my pain. I smoke pot for my anxiety. Um, that in itself is a problem for all of these people, you know. Um, they are eagerly seeking any reason uh, to dislike me uh, or justify their behaviors and actions that have led to my current situation and state of affairs. Um, and there just aren't any. I don't, I'm not a drug user. I'm not a disrespectful woman. I'm not incompetent. I'm not, you know, in, in able, in, incapable of uh, speaking or communicating. Uh, I'm not incapable of walking around, talking. I have use of my feet, my arms, my eyes, my ears. What is it that's keeping me out here? Your brain. This part. All the other stuff. We know you can use every other fucking part of your body, but this right there i think that's the problem and what's more what is it that is preventing communication and understanding of this situation to people who do have the authority and funding uh, to do something about it so last time i checked censorship in the united states of america was still illegal uh, meaning you could not block someone's live feed you could not block someone's instagram you could not block someone's facebook account you can block anyone you fucking want to what? I mean, not for everyone to see, right? Like they can't. Okay, I'm. Maybe I misunderstood what she was trying to say. Uh, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think that they pick and choose who they want to give reach to, and that whether you pay for ads or not, if the information you're sharing is going to make certain powerful parties um, unhappy, you're censored. You know, and all of this goes together. So. Xavier has a button and an antenna. Um, I'll show you guys later. I would never make that up, meaning he is probably a low jack of some kind. I know that sounds crazy, but... It's fucking crazy. Two metal uh, holes right here, right above his heart. Um, and he has another one in his leg. 
Um, Which pretty much, confer- pretty much confirms that I've been on their radar for, for quite some time. They- they- Xavier's like, I've been on their radar for quite some time. <laughs> Who's radar? They have, I know for a fact, just through observation, that they have included him in many, many, many psyops. Uh, when I found Xavier, when he found me and he said, Jehovah sent me to you to protect you and make sure no one raped you. You'll never spend another night outside. He knew my story and what had been going on with the reality show and the abusiveness and everything, the kids and everything. And I observed him in his home and the mess that surrounded him and the chaos that filled his mind and it became clear to me that someone you know was using him for something um, and that they most likely wanted me you know to share with them what that was um, and i don't know you know i truly don't know uh, but it's definitely something and there's definitely something yeah, there's definitely something there. he has two metal I don't know what I have one too. Where'd yours come from? A lot of people who have them, I call them lines in. They disguise them to look at skin tags. And the ones that you could kind of feel, the, the ones that are like super like stiff and erect, you could feel the line in. What is that for? You know, what are what are we being used for without giving our permission? And that's a real question. Xavier worries about the five G towers and the effects of AI long term on society. I'm just trying to get home to my kids. So this is some story, bro. That's what's on my mind today and every day. There's nothing new here. Um, super grateful for this meal. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone involved uh, and everyone not involved. If you're not celebrating Thanksgiving today, um, whenever you decide to. They're just controlling it. I don't know. I don't know. Happy Thanksgiving and uh, keep praying for me and my family and I will do the same for yours. You guys have, uh, oh, I love holidays. Holidays are definitely my thing. Um, again, you guys are getting this. You guys are getting a live stream of a live stream of the comments, correct? And matching them to the same um, UDIDs and yeah, coordinates, please. Four years is way too much and I've not given my permission. I don't want to be involved in this. So yes, I do want all of them criminally prosecuted. If not at the very least questioned as to what gave them, you know, the audacity. And that's a genuine, you know, curiosity. So, I mean, look at that. That's not antagonistic. Your name is Yoga Toes. Like, yuck. You know, just yuck. Why- that's antagonistic to you? What? Why are you here? You know, this is my um, my page Intellectual property. where I document crimes being taken against me. If you're here in the comments saying that what I'm saying is a lie, not only are you slandering and libeling me and my business and my reputation, you're also making it so that law enforcement and authorities have to question whether or not they can take the information I'm sharing as serious or not. So that's a direct involvement um, in what I call diluting um, any sort of investigation that may may have ever been being conducted, if there's any hope for the future. So uh, there's nothing wrong here other than exactly what's been wrong since I was unlawfully thrown out of my home following the release of Dylan Smith from the Illinois Department of Corrections. That's inmate number Y12173, and that was in May of 2019. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. I hope that you... Of course it cuts off there. I was going to be like, we're coming up on the end. Like, she's just fucking going still. But she always does that. Um, All right. I am being called over to the other stream. So I'm going to end this. Uh, It should auto-redirect if you guys want to check it out. Um, If not, there's the community tab post. Um, But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed Heather's thing today. I'll put, like, this one, I guess. Like, there's only, like, four minutes of this. I'll put it on the stream next week, and we'll pick up from there. And yeah, uh, happy Black Friday. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, come check out Crude as Fuck. We're going to we're gonna go over the Whatchamahos. <laughs> the Dallas Sisters craziness, and I will be over there. So see you guys soon. Bye-bye.